So from page 362, any questions from the homework? Two. Yep. Okay. You're ready to be wowed. Because if you do this right, it's actually about four, I think maybe five lines. I'm trying to do this in my head, but I think so. I did uh, this. There's my little tea table. Now, cos 2 theta, I got three options. It's either going to be cos squared minus sine squared, or the one with the two sine squared, or the one with the two cos squared. And I can never remember which one, but I'll come back to those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to watch on this side. And if I see a two sine squared appear here, I'll probably make this the two sine squared one. If I see a two cos squared appear here, I'll probably make this the two cos squared one. And if I have a cos squared and a sine squared, I'll probably make this the cos squared minus sine squared one. Okay? And this denominator is twigging me. What is 1 plus tan squared? See, that's something on my sheet, is it not? The sheet that you have in front of me? You? The top row? Huh? Okay, did you catch that? Oh, you did catch that. Okay. Uh-oh. Hang on, I got someone coming in late here. I need to interrupt my little video lesson. So... 1 plus tan squared is secant squared. I think, Victoria, the first thing I would have done is this. Why wouldn't you have just made everything turn sine of cos, Mr. Duick? Well, first of all, because technically there's only two trig functions. But also, any time I can get rid of a binomial denominator, that's usually a good thing. Now I'm going to rewrite everything in terms of sine and cos. And I can already tell I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to draw my little line over here. Um, this is going to be 1 over 1 plus sine squared over cos squared, all divided by 1 over Cos squared. No big. S Sorry, plus should be a minus. You're right. Thank you, Tyler. Those are the sloppy mistakes that can come back to haunt you because then my rest of my identity would have been wrong. No big surprise there. So far, so good. Now, this is a complex fraction in that it's one fraction over what's a four level fraction. Um, but because I only have one fraction on the bottom, I can say, how do I divide by one fraction multiplied by the reciprocal? In other words, this is why I figured I was going to run out of room. I can rewrite this as 1 over 1 minus sine squared over cos squared times, how do I divide by one fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal. You could have also used my canceling fraction trick. You would have looked at each mini common denominator, and you would have said, oh, my mini common denominator is cos squared, and you would have multiplied top and bottom by cos squared. Okay? That would also get you there. But we're using the how do I divide by fraction, flip it, and multiply, which is legal. When I multiply... Nothing's going to cancel here. It's going to be just plain old cos squared. When I multiply, what's going to... Oh, the minus sign would drop down, yes? Dunk, dunk. What's going to cancel here? i got to be fussy about the cos, the cos squared. What will be left behind? And lo and behold, I'm pretty sure that the cos of 2 theta is cos squared minus sine squared. One, two, three, yeah, four lines, I figured it was. Well, five if I count that one. Okay. I'll do more. Yo. Three? Okay. These are both cos... Now, I can't factor out a cosine or something like that. It's not a GCF, because it's a cos 2x and a cos x. They're completely different. 
Now, this is a period change, but I'm not going to solve it using a period change because there's also a non-period change here. I'm not going to go, oh, let A equal 2x. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to replace cos 2x with something that has only cosines in it. I'm going to rewrite this as 2 cos squared x minus 1 or plus 1? Minus 1. And then the cos x will drop down equals 0. That's going to be 2 cos squared x. I'm going to write the plus cos x right here, Pat, because that's where we're used to seeing it. Minus 1 equals 0. And now we're a lovely quadratic. Do you want me to keep going? I can. You good? Okay. It factors. Uh, 2 cos squared. I bet you I had a 2 cos and a cos. Minus 1 uh, with a positive 1 in the middle. Uh, I want to go a plus 1 there and a minus 1 there. So I think I'm going to get uh, cos x equals a half and cos x equals negative 1. And then I'll go from there. Uh, cos x equals a half. I think the answer is going to be pi by 3 and 5 pi by 3, but don't quote me on that. I'm doing the whole reference angle triangle drawing cast drill in my head, which is always dangerous. And I think cos x equals negative 1. I think you're going to get x equals, if I visualize the graph, I think pi. Okay, I'll let you take it the rest of the way. So looking at this one, for example, I would replace this with the one that only has signs in it. That would give me something with all signs and probably a quadratic. Looking at this strange one, well, this is a bit of a curveball, but I see 2 cos squared something minus 1. I know I didn't assign those, by the way, but I'm just looking at them. Um, 2 cos squared something minus 1. Like, I think this kind of looks like 2 cos squared theta minus 1, where theta is a half x. What is 2 cos squared theta minus 1 according to your sheet? Yeah, this is actually going to be cosine of 2 theta equals 0, where theta is, what's 2 times a half x? Yeah, in fact, you get this when all said and done. Okay, so these are the double angles and where you can use them. Any more? I'm thinking, yeah. Unless everybody impressed the heck out of me and actually got number set, what did I sign? Five and or seven. Seven? Okay. So let's look at seven. Here's what I see. On the top. Except instead of a theta, what do I have sitting in my example? Three over two x. What is cos squared minus sine squared? From my formula sheet, what is cos squared minus sine squared? And don't say whoever said one. No, sine squared plus cos squared is one. What's cos squared minus sine squared? That's a double eye dang ang double eye dangle double angle. Brain's going a little tired. Ian, what is it? Cos. Okay, so the top is cos of two. Now instead of theta, though, what do I have sitting where the theta is? Okay, it's the cosine of 2 times 3 over 2x. That's what the top works out to. Now, what about the bottom? In the bottom, I see sine theta cos theta, which is sort of on my formula sheet, except on my formula sheet, I have 2 sine theta cos theta. Uh, what does 2 sine theta cos theta equal? Well, if I want to make this into just a plain old sine theta cos theta, Tyler, I need to move the 2 over 
How would I move the 2 over and get rid of it? I think I would divide. I think I would have a 1 half. I think the bottom is the same as 1 half sine 2 theta. But instead of a theta, what do I have sitting where the thetas are? 3 over 2x. Okay. By the way, what is 2 times 3 divided by 2? Yeah, I think this is actually just plain old cos 3x all over a half sine 3x. By the way, I'm crossing out this one. Oh, dividing by a half, what's that the same as multiplying by? See, I think that's, I, I'm looking at these two answers here. I think there's going to be a 2. And what is cos over sine? And I haven't asked this question in a while, but it's time to ask it. Did I really do anything new there? No, stubborn and clever. It's a phrase I've been using all year. Okay. What, what you kind of get good at, and this is the art part of the identities, is seeing tweaked identities in bigger identities. So I don't even really see that 3 over 2x and the 3 over 2x. I don't let it scare me. I truly see that when I glance at that, and I know I can make it fit one of my identities, except instead of a theta, I'll just drop a 3x into its place. I don't really see sine 3 over 2. I, I just see sine cos, and I know that sine cos, well, there's a 2 sine cos, but I can tweak it and make it a sine cos. But I've done a gazillion of these, Justine, so yeah, I'm not trying to compare you guys to me, but it'll come from any of you. Any more? Yeah. 5C, good one. So 5A and 5B went okay? Awesome. Those ones I was hoping would. 5C, yeah. What, what, wait, 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 wait. Going to temporarily ignore that, Jesse. Here's what I see. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Except instead of a theta, what's sitting in mine? 3x. See it? Uh, have I got 1 minus 2 sine squared? On my sheet somewhere, I hope. What is 1 minus 2 sine squared? Oh, this is the same as the cosine of 2 theta. Oh, but instead of a theta, Jesse, what did we say we have sitting in mind? Uh, what's 2 times 3x? There you go. And we have written it as a single trig function like they asked for. You do a bunch of these, and suddenly you pretty much start to see almost every type of little curveball they can throw at you. Oh, did I give you a huge phone book-sized review on Monday? Do you think maybe part of it was, I'm sorry, but one of the best ways to get good at this, unfortunately, the, one of the easier ways to get good of this is to do, do, to do a gazillion of them. It's a lot of work, but it seems to occur naturally. Speaking of Monday, so we did Lesson 8 Double angle identities. I said that I had skipped lesson seven. We're going to do lesson seven. So if you would be so kind as to turn back a couple of pages, lesson seven starts on page 351, page 351. And what we've been trying to do the last couple of days, Dylan, is establish rules for dealing with stuff inside the trig function, inside the brackets. So last day with double angles, we said, if you got a two in there, you can't just pull it to the front. It's stuck inside there. Today, we're going to ask ourselves, hey, if you're adding two things, if you're adding two things, is that the same as doing the first one plus doing the second one? And again, there's an easy way for us to check. 
we're going to get our calculators out. Except we are not going to go to degrees like they suggest. I'm mortified. I'm appalled. I am shocked and offended. What is 60 degrees in radians, please? Pi by 3. What is 30 degrees in radians, please? Pi by 6. By the way, what is 60 plus 30 in degrees? 90. What's 90 degrees in radians? Pi by 2. Here's what we're asking. Is the sine of pi by 2, 30 plus 60, is that the same as the sine of 60 plus the sine of 30? Is that true? Find out for me, please. Try doing the left side on your calculator, sine of pi by 2, and then do the right side on your calculator. If you get the same answer, then it's true. I don't think it is. Is it? No. Sadly, no. So it says, what can we say about this statement? Is the sine of alpha plus beta, if you're adding two angles inside the brackets, can you do the trig first and then add the answers? And the answer is, it's a false statement. Nope, you can't. Which leads Matt to the obvious question, how do you add angles? This all comes from the pre-calculator days. Remember I told you that your folks in the pre-calculator days either had trig tables, but if they wanted exact values, I've only given you two triangles. I've given you a 1, 2, root 3, and a 1, 1, root 2. And just for a moment, not on our calculators, but in our heads, we're going to go back to the wonderful world of degrees. I've given you 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, and 45 degrees. What if I wanted 15 degrees, half of 30? Is there a way that I can get that mathematically? And it's not go sine 30 and then divide your answer by 2. It's not. <laughs> or what if I wanted 60 plus, uh, let's go 60 plus 45. What if I wanted 105 degrees? Could I get that? And this is how you can start to build your exact values. So it says, use exact values to verify the following statements. We're going to do degrees one time, and I guess we're going to need the uh, 1, 2, root 3 triangle, where this angle down here was how many degrees? 30. And this angle was how many degrees, Jesse? 60. And let's see if this works here. What is 60? Because brackets, we're going to do the brackets first. What is 60 plus 30? 90. What's the sine of 90? Well, behold the human unit circle. 90 degrees is right here, and my arm is one long, and sine was your y coordinate. So the sine of 90 would be how high my hand is right now at 90 if my hand is one long. How high is it? Okay, sine of 90 is 1. You could also have got that by sketching the graph. Let's see if we get a 1 over on this side, because it is suggesting that these are the same. What's the sine of 60? Root 3 over 2. What's the cosine of 60? Plus. What's the... Sorry? Oh, cos... Sorry. Cos 30. Ha, huh, Mr. Duick. What's the cosine of 30? Also, root 3 over 2. Read these carefully. By the way, do read these carefully because it's easy to make a dumb mistake like that. What's the cosine of 60? Cosine of 60 is... a half. What's the sine of 60? Sorry, sine of 30. Read it properly, Mr. Duick. A half. Let's see what this right side works out to. 
Multiplying fractions is the easiest operation. Top times top, bottom times bottom. What's root 3 times root 3? What's 2 times 2? 4 plus. What's 1 times 1? 1 over. What's 2 times 2? 4. So here's the question. Is that the same as that? Yeah. There's a bunch more we could play with, but I'm just going to give you the sum and difference identities next page. Here they are. There are four of them. And they all look really similar. So like I did not do, you should do. Read really carefully when you do these. If you're adding two angles together, the sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cos beta cos plus cos alpha sine beta. The sine of alpha minus beta is the sine of alpha cos, well, it's those things. And this is going to be very, very careful plug and chug. And these are on your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize them. Although I had a friend when he was taking his equivalent math 12 as a grown-up, their teacher made them memorize all these. And I have to be honest, I lost a lot of respect for that adult ed teacher. Because they all look alike. Where do you use this is really the question. Example one says, use a difference identity to find the exact value. Now, exact value is my trigger phrase of the sine of what? Okay. Have I got a triangle with a 15 in it? No. But it did say exact value. What's going on here? Well, I'm going to list the angles. We're going to go back to degrees a tiny bit here. The angles that I know. So think about the two triangles that you have. What are the angles that appear in there? <coughs> Aside from the obvious 90 degrees, the two triangles that we have, what are, the, what are the angles that appeared in degrees? What are they? 30, 60, and 45, right? Here's my question. Using two of those numbers and either adding or subtracting them, can you get 15 as an answer? Sorry? This is going to be the same as the sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Oh, you could also go 60 minus 45. That would also get you there. But we'll use this one because it's smaller numbers. What is 45 minus 30? 15. What does this expand into? Well, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to find this line, sine of alpha minus beta. And what we're really saying is that's alpha, that's beta. And I'm going to carefully substitute in the values. It says sine 45 cos 30 minus cos 45 sine 30. Now what? I'm going to draw a couple of triangles. How about over here? 1, 1, root 2. 1, 2, root 3. Double check to make sure I plug this in right. Beta minus alpha sine beta. I did. What is the sine of 45 as an exact value, please? What's the cosine of 30 as an exact value, please? Root 3 over 2 minus. What's the cosine of 40 as an exact value, please? Isn't it 1 a half? Are we okay? We're wrong? We're right? We're good? Well, then, Troy, redeem yourself. What's the cosine of 45? I agree. Troy, what's the sine of 30? 
It's a half. Let's tidy this up. How do I multiply fractions? Thankfully, it's the easiest operation. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Uh, 1 times root 3 on the top, I'm pretty sure is just plain old root 3 all over. 2 times root 2, it's numbers times numbers, roots times roots. 2 times root 2 is just 2 root 2, or 2 times root 2, minus... Matt, what's 1 times 1? Woohoo! See, I gave you a nice curveball. Nice one. Nice easy one. Oh, and uh, 2 oh, root 2. Now, I think I can go further because I can't help noticing I have a wonderful common denominator here of 2 root 2. I think I can write this as a single solitary fraction. Final answer. Root 3 minus 1 all over 2 root 2. I need to write that a little bit bigger. I'll do it over here. Equals root 3 minus 1 all over 2 root 2. Yep. Do they always work out to a common denominator? Frequently. Um, while we're on the topic, what if instead of asking you to find the sine of 15, what if I asked you to find the cosecant of 15? How are cosecant and sine related? Cosecant would be 2 root 2 all over root 3 minus 1. I, I, again, I don't deal with cosecant. I do it as a sine question, and then at the end I flip my answer, which leads us quite nicely into example 2. And this is going to be a chunk of work, and I already know that I'm going to have to write small, so I'm going to enlarge my screen. So secant, I don't have a sum difference identity for secant or for cosecant, or for tangent for that matter. Why don't I have one for tangent? Because tangent is what over what? Sine over cosine. So if I really needed to, I'd use the sine one on top and the cosine one on the bottom, which would really be overkill, I think. There is one, actually, for tangent that we used to teach, but it seems to have kind of vanished from the curriculum. Secant. What do we say secant goes with? Okay, so I'm going to make a little note here. Find cos, then flip it. I'm going to find the cosine of 5 pi by 12. In fact, I'm going to write that. I'm going to find the cosine of... Oh, I'm not going to write 5 pi by 12 just yet. I'm going to write cosine, though, to remind myself. I need to turn this into an addition question. So now we're in radians. What three angles in the triangles do I know in radians? In radians. Sorry, what are they? Pi by 6. Pi by 4. Pi by 3. Miguel... What's my denominator here? What should I write these all over to make my life easy? Why not? This is really the same as 2 pi by 12, 3 pi by 12, and 4 pi by 12. Can I write any of those as either an addition or a subtraction question that gives me 5 pi by 12 as an answer? What? How? Okay. Add these two together, I'll get 5 pi by 12. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go the cosine of pi by 6 plus pi by 4, because that is 5 pi by 12. I've got my template. There's my alpha. There's my beta. Now, normally I would draw the triangles, but do we have them on the previous question sitting there? You'll notice I didn't label the angles on purpose because I wanted to be able to use those triangles for either degrees or radians. Yeah, yeah, we're thinking there. 
Uh, okay, let's go to the double a or the uh, addition identity. Uh, cosine of alpha plus beta, what is that? Can someone read that from the top of the page? It's cos cos. Okay, is it cos uh, cos cos minus sine sine? And is it cos alpha beta minus sine alpha beta? Because I also got to get those right too. I can't just look at the trig functions. So cos cos minus sine sine. Cos pi by 6, cos pi by 4, minus sine pi by 6, sine pi by 4. What's the cosine of pi by 6 as an exact value, please? Root 9... Isn't it root 3 over 2? What's the cosine of pi by 4? Minus. Pat, what's the sign of pi by 6? Ah. Uh. Sine of pi by 4, 1 over root 2. Now, Pat, you had asked, will there always be a common denominator? For the basic ones, yeah. I can think of some really bizarre, strange ones where perhaps not, but in I think. Uh, and in fact, I think I get this. Do I not? Now, we're going to try skipping one step. Do you see I do have a common denominator? What is my common denominator? Okay, I'm going to write it all over 2 root 2. And it's going to be root 3 minus 1. Now that is the cosine of 5 pi by 12. It's not what we wanted. What did we want? By the way, in example one and example two, did I have square roots in the denominator? The textbook answers will rationalize the denominator again. So if you're trying to compare your answer to the textbook answer, change that to a decimal, change their answer to a decimal, and they should match. Now that's going, sorry? Uh, this will be a multiple choice question, so I don't believe so, no. That's going forwards. Excuse me. That's going forwards. Uh, they can also ask you to go backwards. Example three. And this is where I like what Miguel said earlier. He started speaking of these in terms of just the trig functions. He said, oh, it's sine sine minus cos cos, or cos cos minus sine sine, or sine cos plus cos sine. Because I look at example three, which says simplify, and I see sine cos minus cos sine, and I go, ooh, I think that's one of my sum or difference identities. Is it? Look at the four that are on your sheet. Is there one of them that's... Oh, let's make it a little easier. Alpha, beta, alpha, beta. Is there one of them that's sine alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sine beta? What is that on the left-hand side equal to? Sorry? No, no, I need the trig function too. I need the whole thing. So you're telling me this is the same as the sine of alpha minus beta, which is the same as, uh, what's alpha here? Oh, you know what? In our notes, let's write it. I was going to do it in my head, but I'm going to write 100 minus 10. And in our heads, what is 100 minus 10? 90. And what is the sine of 90? 1. Okay. Hey, let's try B. Again, this looks really scary, 
but I'm going to treat this whole expression here as one big alpha, big beta, big alpha, big beta. I guess alpha is quarter pi minus theta, beta is quarter pi plus theta. But here's what I see, cos cos minus sine sine. What is cos cos minus sine sine? Sorry? Cos alpha plus beta? This is the same as cos of alpha plus beta, which is going to be the cos of. Now, alpha is this very strange 1 quarter pi minus theta plus, and beta is this very strange 1 quarter pi plus theta. I had no idea where this was going, but now I'm starting to smile a little bit because I noticed, well, what, what do you notice? Ooh, the thetas, theta plus, negative theta plus theta is gone. And I have one quarter pi plus one quarter pi. What's a quarter plus a quarter? A half. Or you know what, Justine? I think we've actually set it as pi by two. That's what that whole mess simplifies. Oh, oh, and that's uh, that's one of my uh, uh, pi by two, pi by two. Up here, what's the cosine right here? You mean this whole thing just works out to nothing? Yeah. Yeah. What's that, Ari? You would like to turn the page? Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's turn the page. I like number four. I like number four. I like number four. Number four is a nice question. I like number four. And this is probably going to answer Pat. It says, given cosine of alpha equals 3 over 5, and cosine of beta equals 5 over 13. And alpha is in the first quadrant. And beta is in the fourth quadrant. Right? Find the exact value. Now, there is my trigger phrase exact value, but this is the one time when exact value does not mean special triangles or unit circle because I don't have a triangle with a 3 and a 5 in it or a 5 and a 13. This is where we're going to go back to x, y, and r. And did I already say I like this question and I like this question? Oh, okay, so I like this question. First of all, they want me to find cos alpha plus beta. What is cos alpha plus beta from my sheet? Cos of alpha plus beta equals what? Cos, cos minus sine, sine. Well, some of this I can already fill in. According to this question, what is the cosine of alpha? 3 over 5. And what is the cosine of beta? 5 over 13 minus. What's the sine of alpha? I don't know. <gasps> Wait a minute. Do I know the cosine of alpha? <laughs> Here's alpha. Cosine is what over what in terms of the graph. I think when they told me this, they told me that x equals 3 and that r equals 5. And they told me that alpha is in this quadrant here. In that quadrant there is y negative or positive positive. How can I figure out how big y is if I know x and y and r? Sorry, x and r. It's going to be the square root of y, 
r squared minus x squared, and yes, some of you recognize our old friend, the 3, 4, 5 triangle, I think you get 4. So I think I can do sine of alpha, because sine is what over what in terms of the graph. This is going to be 4 over 5. Over here, I'm going to do beta. Now, beta, they told me I was in this quadrant here, because it says we're between 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi. And beta, they gave me that x is 5 and that r is 13. What's y? Well, first of all, look at my quadrant. Is y going to be negative or positive in that quadrant? Negative, and I gotta put that negative in. It's not gonna come out on my calculator or anything like that. And let's see. Y is gonna be the square root of 13 squared minus 5 squared, which I think is 140 square root 144. It works out evenly, actually, doesn't it? What is the square root of 144? So y is negative 12. Sine is negative 12 over 13. I keep going here. I get 15 over 65 minus negative 48 over 65. What's a minus minus the same as? A plus. What is 15? Because I have a lovely common denominator. This is very nice. 63 over 65. This is going to almost, well, no, I was going to say this is, this is on the provincial, usually a multiple choice. I think I might make this a written. Anyhow, if it was multiple choice, you better believe one of the answers would have a positive there. So you'd have 15 minus 48, a negative answer. Last one. I'm doing a completely different question. And the fact that I'm getting rid of this question and making up my own, if you're a good student, should tell you something. What was that, Troy? I, sorry, I didn't hear that. I didn't say anything like that. You must just be paying attention. Here is a question that they love. They'll do something like this. Simplify. Pick a trig function, Victoria, sine or cosine? Doesn't matter. Pick quick. Cos. Okay. Put your pencils down, folks. They'll do something like this. Cosine of. They'll put a minus sign or a plus sign here. They'll put an x here or an x here or a theta or a theta. I'll do a theta just for the heck of it. And they'll go, don't write this down because I'm going to show you all the variations and I'm going to do one of them. They'll go uh, theta minus pi, or pi by 2, or 3 pi by 2, or which angles are they picking? The corner angles of our circle, or uh, what's the other one? Uh, 2 pi. Or instead of putting it in that order, they'll put the theta right there, minus or plus, doesn't matter, and they'll put a pi by 2 there, or a 3 pi by 2 there, or a pi there, or a 2 pi there. You know what? We're going to do that one. This one you can write down. Simplify cosine of 3 pi by 2 plus theta. And kids freak out because like, well, I don't know who theta. Well, don't worry. First of all, can you see this is a sum and difference identity where that's alpha, that's beta. So cosine of alpha plus beta, what is that? Cos, cos minus sine, sine?
So they'll always pick one of these four. Okay? Pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2, or 2 pi. Or they'll really go crazy, negative pi, but it'll be somewhere on the corner. Um, cosine of 3 pi by 2. Now we could get this using a, a sketch, but let's try our unit circle. So 3 pi by 2, uh, there's 0, pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2 down here. And if my arm is one long, cosine on the unit circle was what? The x coordinate or the y coordinate? x coordinate. So if I'm down here, what's my x coordinate? What is the cosine of 3 pi by 2? Turns out it's 0. I get 0 times the cosine of theta. By the way, what is 0 times anything? That whole term vanishes. The minus sign would drop down. And then they gave me the sine of 3 pi by 2. I'm down here again. What's the sine of 3 pi by 2 if my arm is 1 long? Negative 1. And I'm just going to drop the sine theta down. Can you see what this actually, this big mess here, what it actually simplifies to? What's a minus minus the same as? Plus 1 times sine. You know what? This whole mess simplifies to that. And that terrifies kids for some reason in the multiple choice when they get something like this. Oh, oh by the way, so I told you that they'll either put uh, the, a multiple of pi by 2 there or there. I'll even tell you right now what the answers will be. Negative sine, positive sine, negative cos, positive cos. That'll be the four to pick from. Because for these, it'll always work out to negative sine, negative cos, positive sine, or positive cos. There's your sum and difference identities. And believe it or not, that's it for identities. It's the whole shebang. That's the top half of the formula sheet. Get to practice these, yes. Oh, you know what? Number one is very similar to the ones that I was talking about. Can you see? They're either using multiples of pi by 2 or multiples of 90 if we go to degrees. So, you yeah. know. 2a and 2c. Six. I'm going to pause there because I also did I not gave you a gazillion questions to do on the review. Just curious, and I'm being partly serious and partly humorous, how many of you have started that great big review? Let me a couple of you. Okay, so you know what? Assuming, okay, how, have you finished all the ones that I assigned yet? None of you? So I won't assign any new ones today. On Friday, I'll give you a quadrillion more. Okay? 